All right, today I start working on the cowboy's shirt and vest. And hopefully I don't screw it up. Time to play with some clay. I removed his hat because I'm going to have to work around the area where the hat would be and uh, I don't want to damage what uh, I already created so best to remove it and uh, work around it. I got the camera right in front of my face. I'm going to try not to breathe loudly but I can't guarantee I won't. <laughs> it's it's an old age thing. You know how an old guy will sit down in a chair and he goes, ugh, as he sits down in a chair. Well, I got that old man breathing. Now, I haven't got a model in front of me, so I can't. I have to sort of figure out what the wrinkles will be like in the shirt. I had somebody ask me the other day if I uh, had a video on doing wrinkles, and I don't. It's something that changes with everything that you create material and stuff like that now if you can hire somebody to uh, pose for you in a cotton shirt that, of a period of whatever period you're sculpting whether it's a medieval or modern day whatever it really helps to have a model but i don't have one and uh I'm working the freehand here, which is interesting to do, but it uh, just takes a little more thinking about the movement of the body underneath the clothing and uh, trying to make the uh, fabric react to that. All right, this is the... Uh setup I have for my camera. I have a piece of wood that I've screwed down with one screw. I've got a clamped mount for my GoPro Hero 8. And I've got it so that it's in one position all the time. And it's right in front of my face most of the time. So that I can uh, show you how I sculpt what I'm sculpting. And hopefully give you a view that I have as I'm sculpting. But it can be inconvenient and sometimes in the way. I think that's what makes sculpting so exciting and relaxing because you're constantly challenging yourself and your knowledge. I just watched a uh, movie on Netflix called The Martian. And uh, the guy left behind on Mars 
had to work out ways of surviving for months or even years with just a few weeks worth of food left. And he worked it out. And it's, it's sculpting is a lot like that. I mean, it's not quite as heroic as the uh, movie was, but uh, it's uh, just as challenging to figure out what to do to make something that isn't look like it is. I have nine instructional videos that stream on Vimo. Vimeo or Vimo, whatever it's called. And uh, I show you a lot of the things I had to work out over the last over 50 years of sculpting to make things work. And if you're looking for a little bit of help in your own sculpting or if you're thinking of sculpting even as a hobby, it'd be nice to be able to do something that would be fun and uh, you wouldn't have to work for 50 years to find out how to do it. I'm going to use a little Ronsonol lighter fluid to uh, kind of smooth out the uh, rough areas in the uh, area that I just worked on. I've said it so many times before, but I'll say it again because there's always new people watching. The Ronsonol has a tendency to soften the clay. And... Uh, what I'm doing is just taking out those rough areas. But it means I can't work on this area here for at least a half hour or so until the uh, Ronsonol completely evaporates. It takes time for it to evaporate.
Okay, I'm going to start on the other side of the cowboy. Just saw a little thing I needed to adjust on his jaw and neck. I put the hat back on just because I want to keep it on the clay as much as I can because if I leave it off, I have a tendency to forget it's where it's at and I might damage it. So if it's on the cowboy, it's out. It's in good place. And it's not going to be in the way of this sleeve. But I'm going to have to take it off again when I do the, the uh, neckerchief or the scarf. All right, I'm just uh, trying to figure out what the uh, shirt sleeve is going to be doing. All right, be right back. I'm really happy the way the sleeve turned out and uh, this side worked out. Now i got to work the other side, and it's taken me probably 45 minutes just to figure out how to mount this camera. And you can see my... Uh, mount here and uh i had to put a couple pieces of wood one to raise up the uh mount and one more to attach the mount to the base so that i can turn the sculpture while i'm working on it and see this little handle down here that hits this board here i can't turn the sculpture to work on it and so and also the uh, turntable itself if it, it's that I can't turn it and I had to make it so I could turn it and then I had to lower the uh, sculpting stand quite a bit so I could look down on the sleeve instead of looking up at the sleeve and I got all those things worked out but now it's too late in the afternoon to continue sculpting so um, a lot of times it's just time consuming to set up the camera angle so that you got the best uh, view of what I'm doing. And I see a piece of clay that's sitting there that shouldn't be there. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I can see things I got to work on the sleeve right in there. So it means I'm going to have to change the camera angle to get that. Anyway, so I'll pick this up tomorrow. I'm happy with what happened today. I've still got the hand and the uh, bottom part of the sleeve to do. And uh, I'll have the same thing to do on this side over here. And I've got some damage on the uh, shaft here that I've got to work on. And uh, it's coming slow but sure. But uh, I might just be able to finish this cowboy this week. And if I can do that... The rest of it's going to take little, very little time to uh, get it to a point where I can take it to the foundry and get a new update on casting costs. All right, everybody, have a great night, and I'll see you uh, next time. Good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.